Good evening. Good evening. On one occasion, Nathaniel, one of Jesus' disciples, said to Philip, Can anything good come from Nazareth? I know that this famous passage doesn't appear in today's gospel, but we are familiar with that verse of the New Testament. Nathaniel was also known as Bartholomew, and he was from Cana in Galilee. Cana, that place of the famous passage of the wedding. And Cana was a village that was only a few miles away from the town of Nazareth. So in his mind, Nathaniel knew that nothing good could come from Nazareth. He had to learn that from somewhere. That famous verse from John chapter 1, verse 46, reveals the ancient sin of prejudice, the rivalry between two towns. People from Cana despised people from Nazareth. It was the sin of cultural abuse. You could even say verbal abuse. It's people from Cana telling the Nazareans, you can't do anything good. Nothing good can come from you, Nazareth. I wonder if the Nazareans have been listening to that song for a long time, over and over and over and over. I wonder if this type of thinking coming from the neighboring town of Cana affected the Nazareans' mindset. People who have suffered verbal abuse in their lives, they can understand this very well. Sometimes we think that abuse only has a physical form, but words can be as sharp as the edge of a sword. I repent for the times in my life when I have hurt people with my words. Survivals of verbal abuse, they know what it's like to be constantly bombarded with words and with nonverbal signals conveying the message, you cannot do this. You don't have what it takes. There is something wrong with you. Nothing good can come from you. It's horrible. And no, it's not a nightmare. It is like an endless horror movie. But by the grace of God, survivors of verbal abuse were able to get out of that cycle by the grace of God. In the gospel of today, we see a step farther. Because in today's passage, it is not the people of Cana telling the Nazareans uh, something bad. It is not the people from Cana that don't believe in the Nazareans. It's the Nazareans themselves that don't believe that anything good can come from Nazareth. Because Jesus came to his own town and preached with wisdom and confidence and truth. And they were astounded. They were shocked. Nothing good can come from us. They probably thought, this cannot be happening. Isn't his mother Mary? The one with that question of pregnancy. We know his family. Is he not the son of the carpenter? There is something wrong with this picture. This is too good to be true. And as a result of this, there were no miracles on Jesus' part or just a few and Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. Survivals of verbal abuse understand this. When someone abuses you verbally constantly, there is a point that you begin to believe what that other person is saying to you. It's the weirdest thing. You may not embrace this way of thinking on purpose, but because of the repeated nature of the denigration, you start believing it. 
it affects your self-esteem and it breaks you. And the evil one loves to use this as a perfect tool to tear you apart. Then you no longer need someone else to tell you these things because you begin to tell these things yourself. And the vicious cycle continues. And this is exactly what happened to the Nazareans. They didn't need the people from Cana to tell them that nothing good could come from them. And they started to sing the abusive mantra themselves. And this is where Jesus came to break the cycle of verbal abuse. The Nazareans did not believe in themselves, but God did. Brothers and sisters, if you have ever heard someone with your words, maybe this weekend is an opportunity to repent, to say sorry, to make amends, to change. Just like our words, can hurt and divide, so our words can be a source of unity and blessing and life from now forward. Now, we all have been hurt by the words of someone in our lives, but in a particular way, I reflect today on how verbal abuse has affected our self-esteem. The purpose of this reflection is not to reopen the wounds of the past, but to reflect on the healing power of Jesus, because by his wounds we have been healed. When Jesus entered into that synagogue in Nazareth, he did so to break the vicious cycle of very low self-esteem of the Nazareans, of his own people. The Nazareans thought very little of themselves. We have been created in the image and likeness of God. And in baptism, we have been adopted as children of God. This is a big thing. We have royal dignity. We are a priestly people, and this is a beautiful thing. But the evil one wants us to forget that dignity. In the first reading, we hear from prophet Ezekiel that he is being reassured of his mission. He said, as the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me, and he sent me, set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites. They are rebels who rebel against me. So from the start, Ezekiel is being reassured as a prophet that his mission is a mission from God. God is pumping up the prophet's self-esteem because God knows that the road is going to be bumpy. Opposition will follow. It will not be easy. But God is by the prophet's side, so Ezekiel shall not fear. A person with a healthy sense of self-esteem understands this. They understand that we are beloved sons and daughters of God, that our dignity comes from God, that nobody can steal our dignity, that we have been sent by God on a mission, that the road will be bumpy, but God is on our side. And yet we are broken people too, and we are capable of sin because we have been affected by the fall. And this is why I love the Bible, because the Bible is realistic, and the Bible is holistic. And here we see our second reading of today, from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Growing in self-esteem is not pumping up egos, because pumping up egos is pride, and pride is a sin. A person with a healthy sense of self-esteem understands this. We are all broken people, and thus we have limitations. And here the words of St. Paul help. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, with insults, hardships, 
persecutions and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, that's when I am strong. Each of us come to the Eucharist with a different story. Perhaps some of us need to lower our egos and place them at the foot of the cross. Perhaps some of us need to work in helping ourselves to grow in self-esteem, especially after years of verbal abuse. But we all perhaps have somebody in our lives that we need to help them to grow in self-esteem. If you need to help someone to grow in self-esteem, always do it in charity and out of love. And please, always help another people with great love and compassion and in truth. Don't lie to people. Don't lie to them. They know when you are lying to them just to make them feel a little bit better. Help them always with the truth. Don't tell a fish that it can fly. When you help others to grow in self-esteem, you always do so in the things they can thrive. Coaches understand this. Teachers understand this. Learn from them. If you don't know the answer, be honest and say you don't have an answer. If someone is struggling, and you don't know what to say, don't say anything. Just walk with them in the struggle. Be present to them. Be Christ to them. One last thought. On Good Friday, something amazing happened. And Jesus didn't even do it. It was actually a pagan that did it. It was a written sign. A written sign in three languages, so that nobody could miss it. The name of that little town of Galilee was written in that sign. That little town that was so tiny, only 30 families that lived in caves, one synagogue, nothing good could come from that town. That little town was mentioned in that sign. And we see that sign in every crucifix everywhere in the world. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The Nazareans did not believe in themselves, but God did. People with low self-esteem may not believe in themselves, but God does. Amen.